Our next caller is Way from Australia. Hey, what's up, Way? How can we help you? Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so my initial question I asked included, but was not limited to whether I should begin looking for a different coach who was qualified up to the standards insofar as my goals were concerned. Um, so like my current coach, I feel like does not really possess the opposite knowledge regarding diet and fitness in the academic sense. Um, yeah, in our most recent check-in, I interrogated a notion about time under tension and like high tempo in virtually all of my exercises. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to know what you guys thought. Perhaps you guys have like an abstract idea of um, where the preponderance of studies lie in regards to the efficacy of time under tension for building muscle. Okay. It, now, what what are you hiring this coach for? I see in your original question that you sent us that it looks like yeah. you're trying to compete in a physique compete competition. In natural, natural classic physique, yes. Okay, so you got yourself a coach that trains people to compete, correct? Um, he has like regular clients, but he himself has competed. So I thought that, you know, with this, with this like combination of experience and like, um, experience on stage and experience with other clients, I thought, you know, we might do well together. Well, I tell you what way. So it's something I learned when, uh, I, we started mind pump and I started working with Adam. So Adam, obviously a trainer, lots of experience. Like I had, uh, training everyday people, but also competed as a pro and I can't wait to hear what he says, but what I got from working with him was, holy cow, there's a lot more to competing than just, you know, working out and diet that I would have never known because I didn't have the experience coaching other people to compete. There's a big difference between coaching yourself and coaching other people. Um, so I'm going to defer to Adam because this is something he's very experienced well, in. Well, first of all, because uh, you're asking a question around time under tension, and we can get into all that detail, but I'll, I'll tell you right away that uh, a majority of the coaches, especially online coaches in the in the bodybuilding space, are pretty terrible. Um, even the ones that have tremendous experience, pros, even the ones that have been on the Olympia stage, like – you know, a, a lot of these guys, uh, they have figured it out for themselves what they need to do to get their bodies to where, uh, you know, where they can win a show. And that does not mean that they are good at coaching another person, nor does it mean they know probably the healthiest and smartest approach either. So if you have to, if you're already questioning uh, his knowledge or what he's telling you, you're, you're probably, your gut instincts are probably right. He's probably not very good at what he's doing because a, a really good coach, if he's telling you, no, don't do this, or, hey, you should do this, should also be able to back it up on uh, why we're doing this from a science yeah. perspective. I mean, so, and here's the thing too, you have to keep in mind that uh, competitive bodybuilding is a sport. I know some people like to argue that and say it's not. Yes, it is. It's a sport. And so it it's not healthy technically for you. So there's going to be some things that are conflicting with science that supports the healthiest or the best way to do things also. So there's this is a bit nuanced, right? It's not as cut and dry as like, here's what the science says, and, and so this is what you should do. Well, you know, you're, you're playing a sport, and, you know, sports aren't healthy for the body. And so sometimes you're doing things to manipulate the look of your body uh, more so than following the science on what the science says is the healthiest or the best approach. So that it, it is a bit nuanced with that, but I would be really weary of of somebody who you're already questioning, um, you know, their ability to explain to you uh, what it is. What is it specifically that you want to know about time under tension? Uh, what's your question around that? What is he saying to you, and what would you like to hear from us? Um. So from what I've gathered so far, like studies just indicate that. As long as you're controlling the weight on the descent, um, it, it will contribute as much as you know counting the seconds, you know counting down the seconds. So he asked like he asked me on like three second, four second eccentrics on like my compound movements. So like on the squats, I'm lifting like more than say say like up to or more than sixty percent of my one rep max, right? And um, he asked me on like three seconds, three second eccentrics for more than like eight reps. So I found that it, it might have impaired my ability to recover a little bit as well as might have availed in like the development of pain in my knee. Okay. 
you're the you're it just might be look you might be doing too much and yeah as, as you say it's probably more likely his training protocol on yeah. how much volume you're doing is probably hurting you more than manipulating the tempo because yeah, you could play with eight go ahead all of my workouts exceed like the two hour mark oh, so yeah. sometimes i'm going <laughs> yes. yeah. okay so there's your indication right there <laughs> right, right there right, so bro. here's a here's a yeah. here's a big issue that i've seen with coaches uh is that they are they they work in a world where the majority of the people that they work with and train around are enhanced by performance enhancing substances, which really they greatly increase your recovery and your ability to train hard and long. And you're natural. You said you're a natural. Uh, yeah. he, okay. he knows that too. He knows I'm an addy. Yeah, I know. They know that, but they're so, they can be so skewed in terms of, oh, no, you can handle this, or you're young, or you're working out. And well, or his knowledge is coming from his personal experience. I don't know if, is he natural? Uh, I I question he he was kind of dubious about it, but yeah. I think so he he's probably he's probably not natural himself, and right. he's because giving, he has like veins popping out of his like quads and like this all over like from his head to toe. So here's here, here's what we're gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna send you our our maps aesthetic pro uh, yeah, program. Just follow that. That is that is actually inspired by the way I used to train my body to get me all the way to the professional level. And by the way, I was on drugs. So, and I guarantee the volume is nowhere near what you're doing right now. I didn't train two hour training sessions in the gym, uh, even when I was on high doses of PEDs and a pro men's physique athlete on year number four for me, I wasn't even training like that. So the, the idea that a natural athlete uh, is training in the gym five to seven days a week for two hours a, a training session, and then you're also giving me feedback that your 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 knees hurt and shit. Well, yeah, no fucking shit. You know, you're you're hammering the shit out of your body, and the the recovery process and the amount of volume you're doing is ex extremely important to your your results. And if your joints are talking to you. Um, it's pretty obvious to what's going on. And it sounds like he's not well-versed enough or experienced or educated enough to be able to uh, explain that to you, that that's what's going on. But it's pretty obvious to me that you, that's what's going on. And it's less to do with what, what the research and literature says around time under tension, what's better or not better. I could make you do eight-second squats and not hurt your knees. But I also know that if I am going to increase the intensity on an exercise by slowing down the tempo, I'm going to also modify your training elsewhere so I don't overdo it somewhere else. So, mm. And it sounds like he's probably not doing that. So it doesn't sound like he's a very good coach. We wrote those programs, MAPS Aesthetic, with the, in, the, the intent of helping somebody get ready for stage. And so that you know, we're going to send that to you for free so you'll have it. And you can literally follow that for a week and get a feel of what the volume of training yeah. that you should be doing compared to probably what he's got you doing. And way in MAPS Aesthetic, there's uh, focus sessions which allow you to individualize the workout so you can focus on your weak body parts. Okay, so I, I, here, follow MAPS Aesthetic as it's written out. Do focus sessions for one or two body parts that you need special attention on. As far as diet is concerned, here's where it can get really tricky because especially pre-contest diet or diet leading up to a show. This is where it can get a bit tricky. I would look at the network that Lane Norton works with because the coaches that work under him or the people that are associated with him, they do it the best way. They don't they don't go into the the fads and the trends and the weird shit. They do things that are science based, that are as healthy as you could possibly get, while also looking great on stage. So look in his network for people to work with nutrition. And then just follow Maps Aesthetic. I, the, I would not listen to this coach anymore. Because yeah. Wait, wait. What's your what's your Instagram handle? Uh, Shredded Bale. Shredded. B a l e. No space or anything. Okay. Yeah. I, I got you. I got you. All right. Perfect. We'll take care of that for you, and we'll send over you uh, mm. Maps Aesthetic. Okay. All right. Cheers, guys. All right, brother. All right. Thank you. I wonder what his favorite protein is. Oh my god. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, you got to love though, know. Uh, you know, um, this idea that it, like, it, this is nothing to do with the, the science around time and attention. No, right? he's doing freaking way too much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's great that that was a, gave him, you know, the, the clued him in on the, mm -hmm. maybe this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, but 
the having him do three second, five second, eight second, two second. That's you know, not the problem. Yeah, man. that's not the problem here at all. He's just trying to do his own research now to kind of figure it out and piece it together. He needs to find a coach that can just really point directly like, here's what we need to do. This is so unbelievably common. I mean, it was what motivated me. to. So I had no intentions of coaching online. So when I first started – competing and so that it was literally for what we were doing it would the goal was when i got into competing it was can i'm going to show the You're world build a social media yeah, i'm going to build a following to show people i know what the fuck i'm doing that is going to give me a network of people and then i'm going to sell them this app that Justin and i were building obviously that never happened but that was the goal i a business a literally a six-figure business fell in my lap because it was so fucking easy to help all these people that were competing because there's so many bad fucking coaches. Terrible. There are so many coaches who, because they got on stage themselves and even or got to the pro level or even got to the Olympia stage, that all these young kids that are aspiring to be like them just assume that they gotta know what they're they know what they're talking about. And many of them don't know shit. Nothing. They they know enough to get them to that. And honestly, most of them, the two biggest factors that have given them their success is their consistency. Because if you do any, even at, we've said this before on the show, right? A subpar program done consistently is better than a, a superior program done inconsistently. And if you made it to the Olympia stage, if you made it to a pro, you have unbelievable discipline. The discipline it, it has taken anybody, I don't care what level or what your natural gifts or how much drugs you take, that, that is the, the number one factor. And then the second one is drugs. You're taking so many drugs that you can get away with poor programming. You can get away with poor diet. And, and you throw genetics on top of that and it makes yeah. it even even crazier. So I've, see, I've seen some of the craziest recommendations. <sighs> uh, workouts, terrible. The diet stuff that I've seen some of these coaches recommend. Oh, yeah. Downright. It's real damage. Oh, downright dangerous. And then I'm not an expert on you know how you should use performance enhancing drugs. But I know enough to when I've seen some, I've had people show me, and I look at the stuff, and I go, "Oh my gosh, you're an amateur! What are you doing taking these insane combinations of drugs?" My coach told me, you know, mm -hmm. I saw this one girl; she was on enough uh, hormones to, eat. I mean, she was transitioning to become a man. She didn't realize it. She thought she was just trying to get on stage. It's really, really scary. So, watch out for these user <laughs> these, beware. That's it.